Remember this one, right? Mr. Granty Asher featuring who I thought it was who done this through Lloyd Brown, but actually it was Mr. Man here, my producer in the studio. Say hello, my darling. Brick, brick, brick. Yeah, big <laughs> up London Town, big up Judith, big up Conscious Radio, and everybody listening. There you go. So the voice that you're listening to is Mr. Conroy, but you may know him as Star Vibes. Tell me, Mr. Star Vibes. I will always ask this of people, their parents' names, or it could be your grandparents, so we give them sound power. So. My parents' name? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my mother's name is Isilda. We call her Icy for short. Um, God rest her soul, she's no longer here. Uh, my father's name is Austin. One of them original all time Jamaican kind of name there, you see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an unusual question. I must say, quite random. Yeah, no, no, no. I always do that because I think okay. we must give word, sound, and powers to the people that made us who we are. So that's I why I always do that. So, when did your interest in music begin? Um, my interest in music was like, I think it's something that's born in me actually, to be quite honest with you. you know? It's like, um, from when I was small, I used to listen to like people like, you know, the greats, Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, um, Bob Marley, them kind of people there. And my interest has kind of grew. So when does your go from interest to, to doing music? And what did you start with? Did you always want to be a producer? Did you want to be a singer? Where well, you'll be here, no, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, I used to DJ back in the day. Ah, like the okay. I can like believe that. that. Yeah. I can believe that. But I kind of lost that. As as I got older, I kind of lost the vibe for it and I couldn't do it anymore. You know? So um, I still wanted to be involved in music in some kind of fashion. So I decided to become a producer. You know? So, yeah, kind of started from there. Now, I want to know, what is the job of a producer? I think a producer's job is basically to make it all come together. It's like that glue mm -hmm. that holds everything together. Do you get what I mean? Like you, you have a vision for a rhythm track. I will get, get that rhythm track together. I'll have a, um, a vision for what type of artist, what kind of flavor I want on the rhythm track. So I will go and look and search for that artist and, you know, kind of try to bring something together okay. and just kind of hold it together, make it all happen. When you build a rhythm track, are you getting the musicians in? Have you got your own vision of how the sound's going to go? How do you translate from what's in your head to getting it out on the board? <laughs> There's all different ways. And I, um, to be honest with you, I try to keep my thing as live as possible and be with musicians because everything's kind of watered down nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you kind of cut out the people that play the instruments, you're kind of making it redundant in a sense. Do you get what I mean? You're, Absolutely. You're like, There's no need for them if you're going to just sit there and press buttons. So I try to keep the thing as authentic as possible. I'm not gonna say I ain't got some computerized rhythms, but most of my catalogs are kind of live rhythms to get what I'm in. So, um, yeah, sometimes, you know, you get an idea in your head, um, the vibes is there, you might make a quick phone call to like the bass or the drummer, or, you know, one of the band members, and you say to them, look, take this bass line down, like, you know, you have it to him, or something like that, or you beat it, or something like that, do you get what I mean? To try and get it across, so. I've always wondered that, that's why I had to ask, I've always wondered, how does it come from your head to the, to the rhythm track? Because um, you're, you're not playing all the instruments yourself, no, you've got to get... I can't play no instruments. <laughs> <laughs> Straight, I know that. <laughs> so this link up with you and Tinga Stewart, how did that happen? Um, I was introduced to Tinga because um, he had heard some of my production still. And I've got like family, obviously I'm from Jamaica, my people are from Jamaica, so... Um, Don't say obviously, yeah. you could be Grenadian. No, 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 I'm still, 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 I'm
another notification. <laughs> you Jacobs. There you go. There you go. That's true. That is true. Yeah. So, but that was quite a big thing with you for with that that record. You what was it? Every yeah. time. Every time we touch. Every time we touch. Yeah. Um. Basically, that production was like my first production that I solely did by myself. Like no outside help. My own studio. Um. I recorded everybody. Um. Got it all together myself, mastered it, everything like that. Wow. And that production was the production that actually got me noticed by VP Records also. Yes! So because of that, they kind of gave me a five-year um, contract with them. Isn't that yeah. wickedly brilliant? The first time that you've yeah. done it all yourself and look how it you got acknowledged. Yeah. Because you were able to foresee your vision to the end. Fail or succeed, it was all held back. And it's a good feeling to know that something of yours, you know, has come to fruition. It's, it's come through. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So it gave me a lot of encouragement because, to be honest, for like two, three years, I was knocking on VP's door like, look, take the thing now, go on, bust it to the mainstream <laughs> kind of thing and make everybody be aware. And, you know, every time it was like a knockback, a knockback, a knockback, a knockback. But on that production, they actually contacted me. And said That's to the me, way it does they be a bit interested and blah blah blah. And you should have said, I'm not ready. Yeah, but I did, I did say that. I did say that. I'm not even lying. I did say that. It's one thing. You got the nail on the head, as they say. Yeah. Because um, basically, um, it wasn't really ready. There was a few more bits to be on, to, to be added and okay. stuff like that. And pulled it together. And in the end, they gave it to them. They marketed it and they distributed it. You know, and that and became a big thing, didn't became it? Became a big thing, yeah. So that put your name right out in the market. Yeah, it did. Now you worked, now I don't know if Harmony was before Melody. Who did? Um, Harmony Deja was first. Harmony Deja was first. Now Harmony was a backing singer, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. What was it about Harmony that made you go, all right, I'm pulling you out and making sure you You're feeling the tune too, huh? So how did my girl end up on stage with Erica Badu opening up the show? <laughs> um, through a talent edit, do you get what I mean? Um, who made the call? Who had it happen? Did you contact someone and say, look, I would like her to be on it? And they said, yeah, yeah, that can work. My girl, that's so. Well, that one I'm going to leave as it is. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> You don't want to lose your contacts, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. I so much for that. All right, right you know all I mean? right. But you slept with the right person. Oh, no, yeah, good for like that. <laughs> <laughs> Put it like that, yeah. Because that was quite a big thing to be opening up for Erica Badu. That, that was a big thing for Harmony, and um, obviously, you know, when you get such an opportunity, it's one that you can't really take lightly. No. And the thing with Harmony is, you know, sometimes she doesn't believe in herself because you know she's got lupus, she's got you know more recent illnesses, yes. which I won't go into. But um, the whole time I was in with her, we always fighted for Lupus UK and stuff like that to be more awareness and you know spread the message about it. But um, she kind of didn't believe in herself in a, to an extent, but you know, the main thing was she delivered and she presented herself professionally very well and she done an excellent job for Erica Badu. And for the UK on a whole, do you get what I mean? So I think that happens though, when you're not used to being the front singer, and and it's the by, back, the, by yeah, but not being the front singer. You used to be the back singer, so yeah. you're not used to the attention so, yeah. totally on you. And that's what your job is, isn't it? 
to yeah, encourage and, encourage her. Yeah, and make sure. And she, look, she done it, right? That's a big thing. She done it. She got there in the end, and you know what? Um, I rate Harmony 24 sevens. You know, my love for her can't die. No, no, I so love Big up yourself, Harmony Deja, and where we're here. In it does. So we have yeah. her opening up for Erica Badu, and then you've got Melody, who won an international award at so, the Guyanese Festival. Yep. Um, she actually won three awards that day. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Don't yeah. let me underestimate the team now. Yeah. <laughs> she actually won three awards, and um, one of them was for one of my productions, one was for an R&B song, and I can't remember what the second one was, the third one was to be honest. No, she was mashing it up out there. But yeah, she actually slaughtered the place out there, I couldn't believe it, I mean, it just went mad with the track, um, a track called, have you had the track, you got the track, wait, what was it, what was it Can't called, um, it. Um, Love um, Everlasting, Love Everlasting, Love Everlasting. <laughs> I don't think I got that one, I'm too actually. bad, I've got too much productions for me to You have, you have, you really have, now I've got the link up one, but I haven't got that one. I've got linking up. Yeah, I've got linking up, did you do that one? Yeah, that's one of my productions as well. All right, well, let's have a little listen to that one then. Okay. Just a little touch of that. Oh, actually, no, this is Star Wars. This is a really track you've used a few times. Yeah, this is the um, really track is this again. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Sparky Rabbit, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah, 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 yeah. That one was quite bad as well. I love that. that I love that tune. It brings that act from the thing. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I'll stop because I'm a rhythm. So that's Miss Melody on the rhythm track, but I'll tell you the rhythm track you would have probably heard me play because I love this track dearly, dearly, dearly. Sparky Rugged, featuring Kitty Corbin. I love Miss Kitty. Wow, wow, Kitty. Watch your friends, watch your friends, where you can love this track. Watch your friends and have this track. <laughs> Sparky Rugged, one of our best out vocals out there with our, as you know, DJ's history, nosy stuff. Love that man, love this rhythm. You've also worked with one and only Mr. Frankie Paul. Yeah, I have actually. <laughs> what was that experience like? Um, it was a blessing still. It was a good experience. Um, Frankie, was he was he well at that stage? Was it early no, on? No, he oh, wasn't. Right. He wasn't well. Um, but even so, you you know, he was self medicating and stuff. Um, to watch him it was a bit sad to see what an icon like that has, has actually come to. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I mean, the one thing in life is definitely, <coughs> to be quite honest, we're all assured that you to are. Face that. Do you get what I mean? But as I get into a certain age, like it was my birthday on Sunday, I'm going to ask him age, but... He's a know. young man, man. He's a young man. I don't know what him I deal with, sure. It's like, when you think of life, it's like you got illness and sickness. When I see what my parents went through before they passed and stuff like that, you know, it's like... I, when I think that's what's to come, you get what I mean? But him, when I was dealing with him, he kind of just dealt with the music, man. And he just lived his life musically, I, I suppose, do you get mm -hmm. what I mean? Because he's a man of great achievements. Do you know what I mean? And he's, really? He's, and he's I found it so disgusting much. that the way that he, but the music fraternity, as in Jamaica, ha handled, them. handled yeah. him, was really out of order. And the other people give props to Orlando Gittins every single time. He put it upon himself to try to raise money for his leg and then he got in trouble, for, not because of his, because of bad mindedness, but always give enough praise for Mr. Orlando because he'd done the right thing for him. Yeah, man, big up Orlando every time. Man. Every single time. Love that, brother. So now, we, we're going to talk about Granty because I think that you two have got. <laughs> A lovely connection. Yep, Granty. Respect me, brother. I'm going to say a lap time. Big up yourself every time, King. Stay. Yeah, and he's got a beautiful vibe. I've had him in the studio before, and he's got an amazing vibe about him. And there's a tune. I'm going to drop the tune, and I know he's got a new album, which we're going to feature. I'm going to give You're going to get a We're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> this is the anthem tune. <laughs> Black skin. I know you know it. That's me right now. It's just a blessing. My coffee from the two of us is still one more. Look on the black skin. Just look on the black skin. 
funny thing about this one, you know, this song was secondary. This was not going to be the song on that. <laughs> Isn't that weird how that works out? <laughs> but you see, when I heard this, I said to him, yo, granted, this one I want to. <laughs> And this one, my one, because it's supposed to do a cover version of this rhythm. Ah. Yeah, and then he sang this to me, and I said, Bronte, what are you doing, man? We're not going to bother with that, that cover version. This is the one I want. I'm so glad you did. Right. This is a top tune. I've got a few more guests here. I'm just hogging up with this man because I, we're going to feature your quick, quick, quick feature, quick feature. So, so <clears throat> we have an exclusive happening, people, right here. That's right. Oh, bless up, Thelma and Marsha. Right. So we've got an exclusive happening right now. Sling it in. Which one? This one. Yeah. Put it in there. Number three, four. Okay. Number four. All right. Do we know a track you want, or are you just going to run? Yes, you can play from one to another. Alright, so we'll just press. So, this one's called Tonight, 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 people. This is off Granty Ash's brand new album called The Flip Side. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Take that out. Take That's that the wrong CD. That's his PA for today. Okay. Let's be gentle. Oh, sorry. That's all right. No, well, that's why you're not this is live. Is that what I was about to say? This is live, people. All right. So that's what happens. That's his PA for today. Uh, right. That's oh, where is he PA tonight? Um, who tonight? Yeah, some event. Done. Oh, somebody I mean, just put that up here. Tomorrow yeah. he will be at the Vibes FM thing with Luciano and um and Lukey D. Oh, Lukey D, a nine. Do you have time for Mr. Lukey D? Alright. <laughs> <laughs> So it's just a basic <laughs> rhythm, alright? So this is why I say it's a preview. 
All right, so the work seems to be done. Well, there you go. Those of you that was listening, going, well, there's no lead guitar on this. Where's the guitars on this? I, I'm sure you were all out there going, I can't hear the guitars. Thanks for that. No, not still, they're not. I've been trying to get this man in the studio for 10,000 years while I'm here. <laughs> but I need to move on to my one other guest. One more, one more, one more, one more. Let me get the right one. You're going to get the right one. Go on, go on. That's three. Do you want three or you want four? Three. That's three. That's three. No, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah, this one car rude. Yeah. Oh, you're so keen, man. I know my copy is hanging around somewhere. <laughs> okay, that's all I know. Can't come my studio, give me thing I don't give me nothing, right? the cows in every shekel, right? We've got our penny jar. from Mr. Branty Asher's new album coming out called what? The Flip Side. Yeah, I like that. The Flip Side. And that was the voice of Mr. Star Boys Conroy. Star, Boy, Star Vibes himself. Star Vibes Entertainment. Work with enough, enough, enough people. And if I had time, I would play with you all the time. But I've got to move yeah. you. Also, I've worked with her over there. And she did. I've got her over there. No, I'm just trying to set her up. That's all. It's it pointing to Miss Angie Big up yourself, Angie B. And I'm a place one. Oh, yeah, man. Big, 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 big. So we're going to bring Angie in right now, actually. Thank you so much for my exclusive that you've given me. You just eject him that, you know, stuffing the tea, nah, cheese sure. and bogey. All right, so we've got Miss Angie V that's coming in, and I just want to drop one of Angie's tunes for you so that you.